In today's video, my dear sewing friends, I would love to share with you this easy method of how I drafted this beautiful flutter sleeve blouse. Now you can also call it a butterfly sleeve, whichever way the sleeve is the start of the show in this case. And I absolutely love that it's not too basic, it's not too complicated, it's that sweet in the middle, and it definitely will elevate your everyday look. Now the print definitely makes this blouse pop. We're going to be working with a woven, non stretch fabric if we have two waist darts in the front two waist darts in the back to add a little bit of shaping to that area and of course you can transform it into a dress you can pair it with a skirt you can pair it with pants possibilities are endless so turn on your creativity and remember if I can do it then you can do it as well so let's get started Alright, we're going to get started on this side right over here and first measurement that we're going to take is nape to waist. Take your measuring tape, place it on the nape of your neck and drop it all the way to your waist. There we go, nape to waist. Now usually if you would have seen any of my other tutorials, we would go ahead and divide this measurement in half and that would give us an approximate position of our bust line. However, since this time we're working with waist starts, we need more precision in what we're doing because waist starts do reference to the position of the bust. So instead of doing that, we're actually going to start by drawing a perpendicular line for our waist. For that, you're going to take quarter of your waist circumference plus 3 eighths of an inch for ease. Take your measuring tape, place it on your waist and measure the circumference. For me that's going to be seven and a half inches plus 3 eighths of an inch for ease. There we go and that is going to be my waistline. Now we need to find our bust line. This is really easy. From your waist you're going to take a measuring tape and you will measure all the way up to your bust, to the fullest part of your bust. For that go ahead and grab a pencil and for me this measurement is six and a half inches. So right over here on this line I'm gonna mark six and a half inches. There we go and I'm going to put a little mark like so. Now we need to find the distance between two of your bust apexes. So really easy, take your measuring tape, measure from one bust apex to another and divide in half. For me that's three and a half inches. So from this point right over here, which was the distance from your waist to your bust, you will mark three and a half inches as a straight perpendicular line. There we go. This will give us the position for the waist dart a little bit later, but this line, if we're going to extend it, is going to give us our bust line. So go ahead, take a quarter of circumference of your bust, plus three eighths of an inch for ease, and starting at this point right over here, you're going to draw that measurement. Now right now our garment only goes from nape to waist, but I would like my blouse to be a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend it by six inches. For you that can be any other measurement that you would like, just measure it from your waist down however long you would like your garment to be. I would like mine to be six inches longer. There we go. And because it almost goes down to my hips, I'm going to mark one quarter of my hip circumference plus three eighths of an inch for ease at this position right over here. Fantastic, now we have our hips, our waist, and our bust. Now let's go ahead and turn this and we're going to talk about the neckline and the sleeve. As always, we are drafting back pattern piece first. So for my back pattern piece neckline, I'm going to take three and a half inches. Now you can determine this measurement on your own if you've drafted your patterns before. If not, take your favorite top, take a look how wide is the neckline and use half of this measurement right over here. And remember, you can always start small and then cut away if needed. From this point right over here from the edge of the neckline, go ahead and take one inch up like so and now we can draft the back neckline we need to connect this point and this point with a really nice curved line let me go ahead and outline this in red so that way you can see a little bit better 
there we go. Now before we move on to creating a sleeve, we need to bring up our armhole just a tiny bit, at least I do. This is my bust line and since the sleeve is going to be quite wide and open, I would like for it to end a little bit higher than my bust so nothing is peeking out. So this is my bust line and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring it up about an inch. I might change that a little bit later but for now this is going to be one inch right over here. So I'm just going to bring it up like so. Now let's go ahead and talk about the sleeve. We need to determine how long we would like that sleeve to be. So take your measuring tape, place it at the base of your neck where your neckline is going to end and then go ahead and measure how long you would like that sleeve to be draping off your shoulder. Now record that measurement and now we're going to be using that measurement to create our butterfly sleeve. The first thing that we want to do though is we want to draft a straight perpendicular line in pencil from here. It doesn't have to be any particular length. This line is going to be a working line so this is going to help us out in creating the sleeve and after that it will disappear. Now I have determined that I would like my sleeve to be approximately 11 inches long. So what I'm going to do is you're going to take your ruler, you're going to place the beginning of your ruler right over here at this point of the neckline, there we go. And then we're going to angle our ruler at the 11 inch mark for you, that may be a different measurement. And I'm going to angle that 11 inch mark to fall onto this line, this working line that we drafted a little bit earlier. So just like so. A quick tip right over here, if you got to this point of the video and now you're starting to question yourself whether you want to proceed on this design or not, or any other design for that matter really, and you just uh, you just feel a little scared and maybe you have a lot of fear and anxiety in the regards of, well, if, is it going to turn out or is it not going to turn out, is it going to fit, not fit, the best remedy for that is to do a test garment. So once you're done with your pattern draft, just go ahead and make a very simple test garment. You don't have to sew it all, just baste it together, try it on and see if the fit and the placement of design elements is what you like and after that you will know either what to fix or that aha this is great and I can move forward. So just remember that the best remedy for your fear and anxiety in regards to sewing is to make a test garment. So here's the beginning, here is 11 inches crossing this penciled in line, there we go, and just go ahead and draw a straight line just like you saw me do on a screen. Now though, go ahead and grab your pencil and what we're going to do right now would be similar to how we build a circle or let's say a circle skirt. What we want to do is from this point right over here, to angle your ruler down and mark those 11 inches all the way through. That is going to form our butterfly sleeve. And you want to continue to mark these 11 inches all the way down up until the point where it's going to meet your side seam. As you can see, this is going to be our sleeve. So let me go ahead and connect all these little points so that way you can see a little bit better on the screen. Sorry about the spot, got smudged a little bit, but it's okay, we will live. Now it actually just so happened, totally a lucky coincidence, that my sleeve ended almost at the point where we are starting our side seam. Now literally this is a lucky coincidence. In your case, depending on how long or how short you would like to have your sleeve, your sleeve might end higher or it also might end lower. Depending on that, you're either going to extend the side seam up, you just want to make sure that the distance from the shoulder all the way to the bottom of your sleeve is enough for your arm and your armpit and your underarm section to go through. And if your sleeve ends lower, you're just going to ignore the side seam line that you drew and of course your side seam is going to start at the bottom of the sleeve. So it definitely depends on the length of your sleeve. For me, this was just a lucky coincidence. So go ahead and play around with your pattern and I'm sure you're going to find the result that works for you. Now in case if you don't want to figure anything out and you would like the same result as I have right over here, what you can do is you can take your ruler and before we start drafting this line right over here, what you can do is you can measure the distance between the corner of the neckline all the way to the top of the side seam. 
there we go and that gives me a little bit less than 11 inches because right over here you can see that my sleeve did not align exactly because i was not planning for it now this distance from here all the way till here before we draft this line and before we do the curve will be the exact same distance that you're then going to draft right over here and from there you can go ahead and do the butterfly sleeve that will end up exactly at the spot where you want it Now that the sleeve is done, let's go ahead and talk about the side seam and the waist darts. You don't have to have waist darts. What you can really do is you can just go ahead and take a straight line or almost straight line, draft a side seam just like we do pretty much in any other of my video tutorials where we don't use a waist dart and that said your top would be done and dusted. However, I would like to have a little bit of shaping underneath my bust since right over here we are going to have a little pocket of extra fabric because that's just how the sleeve works. And I would like for the top to be shaped a little bit under the bust and a little bit in the waist so that way there's not a lot of excess fabric in this area. Now a dart is really easy to understand. Dart, the way I see it, is just the difference between two measurements, two volumes one volume and another volume. Now what we need to do is we need to take this measurement, your bust measurement, and subtract your waist measurement. So we're finding the difference between two measurements. Go ahead and take, take your measuring tape or your ruler, measure one, then measure the other one, and subtract one from the other. Now for me this is going to be one inch and what we're going to do is we're actually going to add that one inch back to your waist measurement. Why? Because that is going to create a dart. As I mentioned, you don't have to have it. You can make a sight scene without a waist dart and it will be just fine. Plenty of videos on my channel where we make a beautiful top without a waist dart. Number two, if you have already a bodice block with a waist dart, you can copy the waist dart from there and adjust it to your preference to fit this particular design. Number three, if you remember from a darted bodice block video that we did quite some time ago, I used this dress form as an example and I did the bodice block with darts for this dress form. So it wasn't for me, it was for this dress form. The difference between the bust and the waist on this dress form is quite bigger than mine. My difference between a bust and my waist when we talk about quarter measurements of our body that we use for pattern drafts is just one inch. That's one of the reasons why I took the full difference between my bust and my waist for the dart. Usually, as I mentioned in the video where we drafted the bodice block for this dress form, I would divide that measurement in half. I find that that gives you a good amount for the dart and also a good amount for that extra bit of ease in the sight seam so that way you can create that beautiful sight seam. So again, play around. You can either use a full difference between your quarter measurements of your bust and your waist if your difference isn't really that big, or if your difference is bigger, you can go ahead and divide it in half. There's also a variation of how much usually can you use for the waist dart and it really just varies so again play around with it have fun and I'm sure that you will find what works for you there we go you see I've added this right over here now what we need to do next is we need to determine the positioning of our dart here is our bust apex we've determined that Go ahead and grab your ruler and drop a straight perpendicular line from it all the way to your waistline. And this is how I go about darts. There are many other ways how you can do that. I'm just showing you the way that I find easiest to understand. Now this is going to be this line. This is going to be the center of our dart. The volume of our dart is going to be one inch. So we need to distribute that evenly on each side. So that is going to be half an inch on each side. So half an inch here half an inch right over here. Now to make things even easier, we're going to make the dart exactly the same in the front as it is going to be in the back. And since we're going to copy everything off of the back pattern piece, we need to lower the top of the dart because if we don't, it is going to end up right at the bust apex and that is not a desired outcome. So let's go ahead and lower it by about one inch. If you have larger bust, you can lower it by inch and a half. Just play around with it. You can always adjust the positioning of your dart. 
So there we go, I have lowered my dart. Now, all we have to do is make a triangle and connect this point with this point and this point. So go ahead and let's do that. There we go, now we have the top of the dart. Now let's go ahead and talk about the bottom of the dart. Now this is going to be the bottom of my garment and I really don't want the dart to go all the way up to the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and extend this straight line leaving one inch from the bottom. There we go. And here all I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to go ahead and connect and create the new dart legs. A quick note about the dart that goes below your waist, so about the second half of your dart. I ended my dart about one inch above the hem of my top. And again, the difference between my waist and my hips is about two inches when we talk about quarter measurements that we use for our pattern drafting. Depending on your measurements, you might want to end that dart a little bit higher, or if you want, you can end that dart a little bit lower. There we go, this is going to be our waist dart. Now, all we have to do is to create a side seam. Now the easiest way to go about it would be just to connect all three points, the bust and the waist and the bottom of our garment and see how this looks first because that will give us a clue what we need to do next. And here at this point right over here, we don't necessarily have to make sure that we hit right this point. We can also make it a little bit wider if that will give us a more beautiful side seam that will look better in our garment. So here I definitely wanna make sure that we smooth out this angle right over here. And over here I'm gonna take about, I would say quarter of, a, of an inch to the uh, right in order to give myself a little bit more room in my waist. And now we're gonna connect this point all the way to our bust line. All right, so you see a lot better. Now what is going to happen here at the waist is this one inch right over here that we extended it by because that was the difference between my bust line and my waistline, this one inch is gonna go away into this dart, but then we will also have quarter of an inch extra right over here just to give us a little bit more room in the waist and that will also give me a more beautiful side seam. And pretty much that's it, your back pattern piece is ready. This is how our back pattern piece looks when it's flat. Don't forget to mark your pattern pieces and mark the fold, which is going to be right over here at the center back. Then we're gonna go ahead and take a new piece of paper, lay it on top of the back pattern piece and trace it in pencil first. We're gonna change up a couple of things and then we'll be good to go. Dear members of the channel, if you are watching, a quick reminder for you. First of all, thank you so much for being a member. It is a paid function for those who are not aware and it helps the channel to be what it is. So big thank you from the bottom of my heart. And as a perk and as a thank you for being a member, of course you have instructional sheets available with steps on drafting, as well as a member's extra video on useful bits and tips on this blouse and some other interesting design elements that you can add in order to modify and use this pattern time and time again. So definitely check out your perks if you're not a member yet and you're just wondering what is this all about i will leave all of the useful information in the info box below but make sure that you read it in full before you proceed the steps so again i will leave the useful information about what are the memberships in the info box below for those who are interested so when you have copied the front pattern piece from the back pattern piece and pencil everything will look like this i will however put my back pattern piece underneath because in pencil you don't really see it as clearly on camera so that way you will be able to see all right, so hopefully now you can see a little bit better what kind of changes we're going to make. And the changes are going to be only two. Number one, we need to raise this point right over here. So let's go ahead and raise it by half an inch. So just go ahead and extend this line over here by half an inch up. All right, and now we need to connect this new point with the edge of the sleeve. 
Now we need to lower the neckline because this is going to be the front of the pattern. I will lower mine by two and a half inches. So from this point right over here, I will take two and a half inches down. You can take any other amount that you desire. You can go for a V-neck, you can go for any other style of the neckline. It really depends on you. Then from this point that I've marked, which is two and a half inches down, I'm going to take a straight perpendicular line like so. And the same I will do on this side. It will give me a little box. And it's going to be a lot easier for me that way to draft my front neckline. And that's it, just two changes and your front pattern piece is ready. I'm gonna go ahead and mark this in red. We're going to label our pattern pieces and from there we're going to be ready to rock. All right, so first let's go ahead and talk about the pattern. So we have drafted the pattern. Now before you cut it out, if you want your seam allowances to be visible on the paper pattern, go ahead and add them now. If you add your seam allowances just like I do, once you cut your fabric, then you are free to cut your paper pattern out. I also find it that if you do add your waist darts, if you cut the waist dart out, it's a lot easier to mark it on a pattern later with your chalk or heat erasable pen or whatever other marking tool that you use in order to make sure that you mark your darts. Now once you fold your fabric and you're ready to cut, remember that the grain line on this pattern will be exactly where the fold line is as well. So center front or center back, which makes it really easy as you cut your fabric. You will need two pattern pieces, the front on the fold and the back on the fold as well, and that's about it. I do pre-wash my fabric before I start sewing, and I would suggest for you to do the same if your fabric allows it. Now, this is the fabric that I used, and I got it at fabric.com. I would suggest for this particular design to go for something that is really nice and flowy, so nothing too crisp. Don't go for crisp cottons or anything that holds shape too well, because then it's just gonna be very, very stiff. So anything that folds really nice. You can go for silk, you can go for rayon, you can go for viscose. So definitely play around. You can drape it on yourself, you can drape it on the dress form, and you can see how the fabric acts when it's draped. And that will kind of give you the clue whether this fabric is going to be good for this design or not. If you want to purchase fabric in order to make this top, you're just not sure how much to purchase. If I were you, what I would do is, I would draft my pattern first, then I would do a really quick muslin test garment just to see if I like the shape of the sleeves, the length, and all the other things. And then, once you already have the pattern, go ahead and lay it either on your table or on the floor, take measuring tape, and then measure, and that will give you the approximate amount of fabric that you will need. Just don't forget that whatever you measure, you will need twice as that because obviously, this is just half of the back or half of the front, so you will need twice as that. And that will give you the best result in order to understand how much fabric do you actually need, because we're all different. You might like your design short, I might like my designs long, you might want to make it into a dress, so it really depends. Now, as for the basic construction, I really find it easy and straightforward. So first of all, the way that I do it, and you can do it whichever way you prefer, but I find that first I need to take care of the darts, and taking care of the darts while your pattern pieces are flat and not joined at the shoulder seams or not joined at the side seams, that's the easiest way to get your darts done, and the most convenient way as well, because then you can also press them really well. So first are the darts, and then we join the shoulder seams. And I use French seams on this particular blouse in order to encase the raw edges so that everything comes out really nice and neat. So I'm using French seams in this particular scenario. So then we're joining the shoulder seams. After the shoulder seams are done, we are going to take care of the edge of the sleeve. So this little circular part, this is what we're going to do next. Now to finish the sleeves, I used rolled or pin hem that I did manually on a sewing machine. And when I say manually on a sewing machine, I mean that I did not use any specialty attachments or any specialty foot for the sewing machine that makes this rolled or pinned hem. I just did it by actually rolling the fabric and stitching it down. I have a full video that explains exactly how to do it, why I do it this way, and what fabrics do I do it on and prefer to do it on. And I will leave the link for that video and also the video on French seams and how to hem your garments in the info box below. So if you would like to take a closer look, everything is going to be right there. Now rolled or pinned 
hem done manually on a sewing machine is also exactly the same technique that I used right over here on the neckline. This is perfect when you're working with lighter fabrics like rayon or viscose and perfect for designs like this because rolled or pin hem is really quite narrow. It allows the neckline to actually sit flat, especially when you give it really good press. I've used it quite a bit on designs like this and I absolutely love the way it makes the neckline feel really nice, really light, but still really neat and accurate. So we've done our shoulder seams, we finished the edges of the sleeves, we finished the neckline, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to finish the side seams. Side seams are also done with French seams. And the last step is the hem. The hem here is about one inch and a half wide. It's a double fold hem and that's it. Your beautiful blouse is ready. So it's really straightforward, really easy. I hope that this inspired you to make something beautiful for yourself. And until next time, happy thoughtful sewing and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.